A manticore, Annabeth said, now visible. Her magical New York Yankees cap had come off when she plowed into us. Who are you people? Bianca D'Angelo demanded. And what is that? A manticore, Nico gasped. He's got a thousand attack power plus five to saving throws. I didn't know what he was talking about, but I didn't have time to worry about it. The manticore clawed at Grover's magical weeds to shred him and then turned around with, with a snarl. Get down! Annabeth pushed the D'Angelo's flat into the snow. At the last second, I remembered my own shield. I hit my stopwatch, and the metal plating spiraled out into a thick bronze shield. Not a moment too soon. The thorns impacted against it with such a force that they dented the metal. The beautiful shield, a gift from my brother, was badly damaged. I wasn't sure if it would ever stop in a second volley. I heard a thwack and a yelp, and Grover landed next to me with a thud. Yield! The monster roared. Never! Dolly yelled from across the field. She charged at the monster, and for a second I thought she'd run him through. But then there was a thunderous noise and a blaze of light from behind us. The helicopter appeared out of the mist, hovering just above the cliffs. It was a sleek, black, military-style gunship with attachments on the sides that looked like laser-guided rockets. The helicopter had to be manned by mortals. But what was it doing here? How could mortals be working with a monster? The searchlights blinded Thalia, and the manticore swatted her away with his tail. Her shield flew off into the snow. Her spear flew off in the other direction. No! I ran out to help her. I parried away a spike just before it would have hit her chest. I raised my shield over us, but I knew it wouldn't be enough. Dr. Thorne laughed. Now do you see how hopeless it is? Yield, little heroes! We were trapped between a monster and a fully armed helicopter. We had no chance. Then I heard a clear, piercing sound, the call of a hunting horn blowing into the woods. The manticore froze. For a second, no one moved. There was only the swirl of snow and wind and the chopping of the helicopter blades. No, Dr. Thorne said. It cannot be. His sentence was cut short when something shot past me like a streak of moonlight. A glowing silver arrow sprouted from Dr. Thorne's shoulder. He staggered backwards, wailing in ag agony. Cass you, Thorne cried. He unleashed his spikes, dozens of them all at once, into the woods where the arrow had come from. But just as fast, Silver Arrow shot back in reply. It almost looked like the arrows had intercepted the thorns in midair, slicing them in two. But my eyes must have been playing tricks on me. No one, not even Apollo's kids at camp, could shoot that with that much accuracy. The manticore pulled the arrow out of his shoulder with a howl of pain. His breath and his breathing were heavy. I tried to swipe at him with my sword, but he wasn't as injured as he looked. He dodged my attack and slammed his tail into my shield, knocking me to the side. Then the archers came out of the woods. They were girls, about a dozen of them. The youngest was maybe ten, the oldest about fourteen like me. They wore silvery ski parkas and jeans, and they were all armed with bows. They advanced on the manticore with determined expressions. The hunters! Annabeth cried. Next to me, Thalia murmured, Oh, wonderful. One of the older archers stepped forward with her bow drawn. She was tall and graceful with coppery-colored skin. Unlike the other girls, she had a silver circlet braided into the top of her long, dark hair, so it looked like some kind of Persian princess. Permission to kill, my lady. I couldn't tell whom she was talking to because she kept her eyes on the manticore. The monster wailed. This is not fair! Direct interference! It's against the ancient laws! Not so, another girl said. This one was a little younger than me, maybe twelve or thirteen. She had auburn hair gathered back in a ponytail and strange eyes, silvery yellow in the moonlight. Her face was so beautiful it made me catch my breath, but her expression was stern and dangerous. The hunting of all wild beasts is within my spear, and you, foul creature, are a wild beast. She looked at the older girl with the circlet. Zoe, permission granted. The manticore growled. If I cannot have these alive, I shall have them dead. He lunged at Thalia and me, knowing we were weak and dazed. No! Annabeth yelled, and she charged the monster. Get back, Half-Blood, the girl with the circlet said. Get out of the line of fire. But Annabeth leaped onto the monster's back and drove her knife into his mane. The manticore howled, turning in circles with his tail flailing as Annabeth hung on for dear life. Fire! Zoe ordered. No! I screamed. But the hunters let their arrows fly. First caught the manticore in the neck, another hit his chest. The manticore staggered backwards, wailing. This is not the end, Huntress! 
You shall pay! And before anyone could react, the monster with Annabeth still on his back leapt over the cliff and tumbled into the darkness.